Let us look at the concept of the angle and different types of angles. Now let's say you want to measure a distance, say between here and here. What you do is just use a tape measure, draw your tape measure between these two and you measure the distance between them. Whether the measurement is in meters or feet or yards or inches or centimeters kilometers right could be millimeters whatever the case might be you do have a measurement and you can say to somebody a person had walked from here to there to a certain in a certain direction person walked in a certain direction and you can tell them that the person walked 100 meters so whoever you're talking to has an idea of how far the person is walking or has walked you could also measure mass weight time and so on and so forth but then long time ago you want or somebody wanted to communicate the fact that two persons were walking away from the town and they saw one person walk in this direction and another person walk in this direction so it seemed as if they were not going to the same place but then you say to somebody that those persons, they did not walk in the same direction. And they ask you, by how much were the directions different? Well, you could possibly point your two hands and show it. Or you could draw lines on the ground to show by how much these persons were going in different directions but then how would you communicate that if you weren't able to draw at the time or if you were writing a letter or some article and telling the persons who were reading how the directions or by how much the directions diverted all right did the persons walk in different directions like this? Or did the person walk in different directions like this? Alright, so that's what you that's the concept of what you call the angle. Right? When you have two lines and they meet at a point, they form what is called an angle. Now you can say that when you have two lines meet at a point and they form an angle, the size of the angle depends on the, the amount of opening between the angles, right? It doesn't depend on the length of the lines, just the amount of opening between the angles. So if you have these two lines, and then you have these two lines and this is in let's say this is in the same direction as this line and this line is in the same direction as this line then the angles are the same and how you indicate the angle is to draw an arc like this and you could even put an arrowhead on the arc to say that you are measuring from here to here and this here is the same angle right now just like how you have measurement in length being in units such as feet inches centimeters meters and so on <coughs> you need an a, a unit for angles now 
before we have um, good enough technology to measure or for astronomers to use to measure how long it took the earth to go around the sun <coughs> right long time ago they knew that there was some amount of revolution whether it was the sun going around the earth or the earth going around the sun revolving around the sun they thought at first that the earth that the sun was revolving around the earth but later on scientists discovered that it was really the earth that was revolving around the sun now how long did it take they had an idea that it took one year because of the fact that at one point you have a shadow being cast by a tree or by a wall and the shadow was this length you had the wall so you did build a column concrete column and you had the shadow being cast at midday when the sun was high here and then um, some weeks later on you had the shadow coming here and months later you had the shadow coming here and that's when the sun was highest and then about six months later you had the shadow start going back in this direction and at a certain point the exact length of the shadow from the wall seemed to repeat itself right and by using a certain measurement they say that if this was the sun and this was the earth and they track the number of days that it took for the shadow to come back right here it took about 360 days that's one account of what I've read by the way of how the 360 degrees came about because what happened no, my son needs to be in the center here then they decided that we're going to consider that if this revolution of the earth around the sun was 360 degrees we would also measure a unit of angle where one complete revolution no let me say that again right scientists and mathematicians decided that if it took 360 days for the earth to make one complete revolution around the sun right it goes round and round and round and went back in the same position 360 days later then we're going to divide all measurements of angles that make one complete turn one complete revolution one complete spin into 360 parts and each of those parts is called a degree right well with improved technology we now know nowadays that a more accurate figure for the earth to revolve around the sun is really 365 what am i writing is really 365 and a quarter days so it's 0.25 days it's approximately that right so that each year has 365 days and then after you have four of that you have the 0 0.25 the 0.25 four times makes up one whole four quarters make up one whole day so you compensate for that by adding an extra day to February so every four years you have 29 days in February 
the other years you have only 28 days right so somebody who's born on February 29 they have their birthday only once every four years and they are much younger than you they are only a quarter as younger as young as you when you reach age 20 they are only five <coughs> all right but in any case what you have here is the unit 360 what is called degrees 360 degrees and we write that as 360 and the superscript O here that's 360 degrees now let's go to our different types of angles we have the various types of angles the acute angle looks somewhat like this this is an example of an acute angle and this angle measures less than a certain other type of angle now what is that other type of angle if we should have our circle representing one complete revolution and we do this take a quarter of it because we have four quarters and we take this part here what we really have is a case where we have this line going straight up this line going to the right and we have an angle right here now a quarter of 360 is 90 so the angle here is 90 degrees so it's a quarter of a revolution and this is called a straight angle right the straight angle measures 90 degrees no not straight angle what am i saying let me do that again right angle a right angle measures 90 degrees right so the right angle is a quarter of a complete revolution a quarter of 360 degrees which is 90 degrees all right now we also consider that this angle is less than 90 degrees now an angle that is that measures less less than 90 degrees is called an acute angle all right so the acute angle measures less than 90 degrees mm, my writing here let me type it instead of writing it make it much clearer so this is less than 90 degrees let me erase this so the acute angles the acute angle measure less than 90 degrees all right now you have another type of angle let me draw it here this is my line and then the other line is like that so they meet at this point right and the angle I'm looking at 
is this angle. Let me draw my arrow. In this case, it is greater than 90, because my 90 would be this, greater than 90 degrees. It is more than 90 degrees. But it has not yet reached all the way down here. Now, this being greater than 90 degrees is called an obtuse angle. So the obtuse angle measures greater than 90 degrees, right? But it is less than another angle. Let's finish that up when we look at another type of angle. Suppose you now draw a straight line like this. And then it meets another straight line like this. At this point, you still have an angle, you know. It looks like one long straight line. But since they meet at this point, you say this is the angle that is formed. Alright? This is the angle that is formed. Now, this angle is on a straight line. So, what you call it is a straight angle. Alright? This is a straight angle. Now, that straight angle. What is the number of degrees on that angle? If I go like this, you notice that I am covering half of the total revolution here. And half of 360 degrees is 180 degrees. 180 degrees. So I can say that my straight angle measures... 180 degrees. I write the full degrees here because I don't have a facility here to have the superscript zero. So, back to our obtuse angle. The obtuse angle measures greater than 90 but less than 180 degrees. Alright? So, so far, what we've looked at is straight angle. We look at the right angle. I didn't write anything for the right angle. The right angle measures 90 degrees. Alright? It measures 90 degrees. And the reflex angle. We're going to look at that after. Now... Let me see something here. Let me just erase these things that I wrote and erase one of these lines. Now, suppose the line, this line, meets another line. Like that. You notice that I could make an angle here. And that angle is greater than 180 degrees. Alright? That is what I call, or is what we all call the reflex angle. It is, it measures greater than 180 degrees. You see that? Greater than 180 degrees. Alright? So, we now see our reflex angle. We've looked at our obtuse angle. It is greater than 90, but it hasn't reached 180 yet. The acute angle is less, measures less than 90 degrees. The straight angle is exactly 180 degrees. Alright? Now, we have what are called the complementary angles. Now here is not just one angle, it's more than one angle. Now 
complementary angles really are angles that add up to what to 90 degrees right where you normally find those if you're already familiar with the right angle triangle you can find complementary angles in the right angle triangle right what happened in that case is that you have let's say you have your right angle here and say this angle is a and this angle is b right what happened is that angle a and angle b they are c o complementary these are complementary angles at all times because they add to 90 degrees right they all add to 90 degrees no if you add a and you add b you get 90 if you add this now to it, right? Let me erase my complementary. And before I do that, let me just write down. Oh, I wrote it down already. They add up to 90 degrees. Suppose now I also add this to it. All three would add up to what? 180 degrees. All right? Now, those are called supplementary angles. The supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. Right? The sum of the supplementary angles is 180 degrees. So, you can consider the complementary angles as the two angles that are not the 90. They add to 90 degrees. And then the supplementary angles consist of all three angles, whether it's a right angle triangle or not. Any triangle. All three angles add up to 180 degrees. So all three angles are supplementary, right? Now, when we consider these angles, we have what is, we have them formed inside what is called a quadrant or four quadrants I should say now quad means four right like a quadrilateral four-sided figure the type of angle depends on the quadrant in which it forms so let me return to my circle here com completing one revolution These quadrants are considered to be these four equal parts in which the circle is divided. Where this is the first quadrant, first, second quadrant, third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. All right, anticlockwise. Now, if the angle formed is in the first quadrant. It is the acute angle. The obtuse angle is in the second quadrant. And the reflex angle is in the third. Well, and the fourth quadrant. What did I write? Write the draw my angle like this. Let me repeat what I said a while ago. Mistake. The acute angle is in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, you find the, the obtuse angle greater than 90, but less than 180, right? Remember that exactly 90 would stop here, but greater than 90 would be here, and then you, if you come right down to 180, you have the straight angle 
180 degrees, right? This look a bit small. I'm thinking I probably could make it more clear if I just erase all these things that I have here and form a bigger circle, right? Let's get a bigger circle than that. Probably what I could do, let me get a more a neater circle than what I drew by hand. Okay, I have a big circle here. Nice. Big nice circle. And let me draw my four quadrants. I have my four quadrants here. Good. Now, I can have my angles. This is the first quadrant. All right, let me write it down. We are in the first quadrant here. Here now, the angle that is formed in the first quadrant from zero can go up to but not touch 90 degrees. This angle is the acute angle. All right. If I extend my angle further and touch the 90 degrees, this is my right angle triangle. If I pass that 90 degrees, then I'm going into the second quadrant and I can have my angle on this line, touch this line, right, in the second quadrant. This is my obtuse angle. It is greater than 90. For example, it could be 110. It could be 110 degrees, right? That's an ex just an example, 110 degrees. Once it passes 90 degrees, but doesn't touch 180 degrees yet, right? Now, if I continue to extend my angle to touch the 180 degrees, that is my straight angle. Because what you're looking at, when I draw my angle there, is a straight line. It goes from here all the way here. So that's my straight angle. I can continue drawing my angles, increasing my angle, and what I have is an angle that is greater than 180 degrees, right? It could very well be 190 degrees, it could be 200 degrees, 220 degrees, whatever the case is, but it's greater than 180 degrees, and this is in the third quadrant, right, could go up, and what I have here is 270 degrees, three quarters of 360, 270 degrees, because I had 180 and I added 90 more to it, and then, remember, this is now called a reflex angle. Once it passes 180, it's a reflex angle. This is also a reflex. It passes 180. This could very well be 300 degrees, right? You're still in reflex angle mode because I have my line like this and my angle goes all the way around, right? I have my angle from here, passing 90, reach 180 and pass it, 270. Once I pass 270, I go into the fourth quadrant, right? 
And if I continue on and on, I make one complete revolution of 360 degrees. All right, so that was, those are our fourth quadrant. So those were our different types of angles or complementary and supplementary angles. And then our quadrants. All right, so that's it for this video. I will see you later.